around my work day is spent setting up portable tank power systems for people around the Puget Sound and occasionally abroad. And for those of you who aren't familiar, photovoltaic is basically using solar panels to convert sunlight to electricity. So um, if you're in an area that doesn't have access to stable grid, you can use that electricity for lights or anything, you know, any kind of electrical needs that you might have. So um, first I'd like to just show some pictures and take you through three projects that I worked on with Solar Nexus International and Solar Aid in Tanzania. And um, this is a place where there is no electric grid available. 10% um, of the cost of this system was um, raised by these community organizers. These women um, were not what I expected rural Muslim African women to look act like. They, um, they were big movers and shakers in the community and just making things happen. So um, when we approached the island, a lot of the community came down to the water to welcome us and they sang us a song that was Karibu um, Umeme Jua, which means welcome solar energy. So. <laughs> We've had a lot of appreciative clients, um, but this just blew them all out of the water. Nobody's ever broken out in a song before, so <laughs> it, was, it was really special. Um, the first project we started was on the community school, and the electricity that we generated there would provide um, power for lights, and computers, and um, some sewing machines. And um, we had traveled out to the island with two young Tanzanian solar installers, and we were there to teach um, safe wiring techniques. And, um, but what also happened was there was a group of men in the community there in Chole that wanted also badly to know how to make electricity. So um, they had cell phones that needed to be charged. Everybody had cell phones there that needed to be charged. And also everyone used um, toxic kerosene lanterns for light, so they wanted to replace those with electric lights. Um, so every morning, a group of guys would just congregate and wait and want to volunteer and learn how these systems work and how to assemble them. And it was really awesome. It was exactly what I wanted to do. It was spreading the power to the people gospel. And, um, <laughs> and I don't think any of these guys had ever worked with women before. Um, it wasn't really until crawling around in the creepy African attic with that, um, trying to find some short and wiring that I think these guys actually started to take me seriously. Yeah, she's for real. <laughs> <laughs> and they started to ask electrical questions after that. So um, after finishing that first system, we moved on to the community center. And the hopes here was that they would use this electricity to provide lighting to extend their market day after dark. And um, so I had a lot of preconceived notions about what I thought people on Trolley would think about me, a woman doing men's work. And um, one day, a Muslim preacher came in and a mom and asked to speak with my male colleague. And they went outside and um, I turned to a local guy and I said, oh, am, I, am I in are we in trouble? And he said, yes. And um, immediately I imagined myself being dragged into the town center in stone like I'd done something wrong. You know? And later I found out he didn't speak English and he just answered everything with yes. <laughs> and I was relieved when my colleague came back and he told me, oh no, actually the preacher, he just wanted to invite us to evening mass or evening prayer. And um, he, he thinks that the sunshine is a gift from God and that agrees we should harvest that energy and use it to improve people's lives. So that was, I thought that was silly. <laughs> so the final system we installed was on the community clinic. They needed lights for microscopes um, to test for parasites and HIV, and they also wanted um, lights in their um, delivery room, um, which was you know, really important for them. So um, this is the completed power system on the clinic. So with regular maintenance, this power is going to, um, the system will provide power for a long time, for years to come, and which is something that the Tanzanian government can't promise that 85% of the people in Tanzania that don't have access to a reliable grid. Um, so the way to bring the power to the people is by teaching locals, local Africans, this trade. And um, there is a huge and exciting potential market there. There's 500 million people in Africa without access to a stable grid. So um, this is an exciting thing. So um, now a huge jump back here in the Northwest, what's happening here on the ground in solar. <coughs> Um, well, a lot is happening. Um, here we have stable electric grid that we can hook up to, and the excess power that we generate here, we can sell right back to the utility company, and there's some good looking financial incentives for doing that too here. So this here is a project at Green Bank Farms. It's owned by Island Community Solar. And um, it's kind of like a pea patch not, um, concept where you can invest in just a portion of the solar array. So it's a pretty cool thing. And then also we have um, the Island Athletic Club here. These are all Washington-made panels um, on that building, and then the Whitby Telecom, too. Their new office in Greenland has a pretty big array that we're excited about. So, um, I know that solar is not the answer to global warming or our energy crisis, but um, I do believe that it's um, 
it's part of the solution. So thanks for having me. <laughs>